Hello learner, my name is Dickens. So today we want to proceed by looking at salts. And today we want to look at solubility of salts, having defined a salt. So we said a salt is a compound formed when hydrogen ions from an acid are wholly or partially replaced by a metal ion. So today we want to look at how, uh, how do salts behave when they are uh, dissolved in water. So we want to do that by uh, looking at a simple experiment here. So we have experiment. experiment so i'll give you the procedure so uh, the first thing you do you label procedure number one label a uh, four test tubes uh, you label them as follows label them one two three and then four then secondly uh, you put a small a quantity of sodium sodium sulfate in tube one. Then the next one, uh, sodium carbonate in tube two. Sodium. Uh, nitrate in tube 3 and sodium chloride in tube 4. So having labeled the four test tubes, so you take the first test tube, you put sodium uh, sulfate, the second test tube you put sodium carbonate, the third test tube you put sodium nitrate, and the fourth test tube you put sodium chloride. Then number three, uh, you add uh, about uh, 20 cubic centimeters of water uh, to each uh, test tube, uh, test tube, and shake. So we are simply shaking well to make sure that the salt dissolves. Uh, if it does not, if it does not dissolve, you warm, of course you are warming using some source of heat. Then number four, uh, you repeat. The procedure uh, using uh, potassium sulfate instead of sodium sulfate, potassium carbonate instead of sodium carbonate, uh, potassium nitrate instead of sodium nitrate. And lastly, a potassium chloride instead of sodium chloride. So you're just repeating the procedure. You put a, in a test tube and then you add water, then you, you shake. Uh, number five, <coughs> repeat the process using uh, samples of different salts and then after which uh, you record your results in the table below. So we are saying, for those salts which will dissolve, you'll put a tick. For the salts which will be insoluble, you'll put an X. So put a tick. This mark for soluble ones. 
and x for insoluble salts. So, Lana, this is how our table will look like. We are having a table of the results of solubility of salts. So, our table will look Okay, so we have uh, our table there showing us the salts we are dealing with. We have the, we shall put them into the four categories. We shall have the uh, sulfates, carbonates, chlorides, and nitrates. So our first salt here can either be potassium sulfate or potassium carbonate, potassium chloride, potassium nitrate. So these are the ones we are dissolving in water. Then we shall have the salts of sodium. We shall have sodium sulfate, sodium carbonate, sodium chloride, sodium nitrate, etc. Et so these are the salts that we are dissolving in water. So when you dissolve these salts in water, we have said from the experiment, the ones which will dissolve, you will put a tick. The ones which will be insoluble, you will put an X. Uh, from the procedure, remember we have mentioned somewhere that if the salt is insoluble, then we, we warm. So we are going to realize that we have some salts which dissolve on warming. So these are the expected observations. Uh, if you dissolve potassium sulfate in water, the salt is going to be soluble. So for that case, you put a tick. The next one is potassium carbonate. So if we dissolve potassium carbonate in water, potassium carbonate is also going to dissolve. So we put a tick. Uh, the next one is potassium chloride. So if we dissolve potassium chloride in water, we'll realize that potassium chloride is a soluble salt. So we put a tick. The same applies to potassium nitrate. So potassium nitrate is also soluble. So we are through with the first a uh, class of potassium salts. The next one we are going to look at the salts of uh, sodium. So we are going to have sodium sulfate followed by sodium carbonate. Then we have sodium chloride. Then we are going to have sodium nitrate. So uh, observations, we are saying if you dissolve sodium sulfate in water, the salt is soluble. Uh, also the same applies to sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate is also soluble. It also applies to sodium chloride, it's soluble. And then lastly, sodium nitrate. So we can see uh, the salts of both sodium and potassium are soluble in water. So uh, the next one is calcium salts. We have calcium sulfate, calcium carbonate, calcium chloride, calcium nitrate. So how do they behave when they are dissolved in water. So we start by calcium sulfate. Uh, for the sake of cal for the case of calcium sulfate, we'll realize that calcium sulfate, when you put in water, it would part of it will dissolve and then some of it will remain. So, and for that reason, we are saying that calcium sulfate is a salt that is slightly soluble. So here for calcium sulfate, we say this one is a, a slightly soluble. So if you dissolve in water, not all of it will dissolve. Some of the salt will remain. And for that case, we say calcium sulfate is slightly soluble. Uh, when it comes to calcium carbonate, if you put calcium carbonate in water, you'll realize that calcium carbonate is insoluble. And for that case, we put an X. So X means it is insoluble in water. Next, we have calcium chloride. If you dissolve calcium chloride in water, you'll read that calcium chloride is a soluble salt. So you put a tick. Then the last salt of calcium is calcium nitrate. Calcium nitrate dissolved in water, it's a soluble salt. And therefore, our correct observation is there is a 
tick. Next, we have the salts of magnesium. We have magnesium sulfate, magnesium carbonate, magnesium chloride, magnesium nitrate. So these are the expected observations. If you dissolve magnesium sulfate in water, it's going to dissolve. Therefore, we put a tick. Uh, magnesium carbonate, magnesium carbonate dissolved in water, it will not dissolve. And for that case, we are saying magnesium carbonate is insoluble. So we put an X. Uh, magnesium chloride, it's a soluble salt. So we put a tick. Magnesium nitrate is also a soluble salt. Therefore, we put a tick. So those are the salts of magnesium. Uh, next, we come to the salts of aluminium. We have aluminium sulfate. Uh, if you dissolve aluminium sulfate in water, it's going to dissolve. And for that case, our observation is we are going to put a tick, meaning uh, aluminium sulfate is a soluble salt. Uh, next, we have aluminium carbonate. So, learn, I want us to understand that aluminium carbonate, uh, a salt by the name aluminium carbonate, does not exist because uh, the salts of aluminium normally hydrolyze in water uh, to produce an acidic solution. And for that case, for the this observation, we are going to put uh, a dash, meaning aluminium carbonate does not exist because of that reason that aluminium salts hydrolyze in water to produce an acidic solution. So therefore, we are putting here a dash because aluminium carbonate as a salt does not exist. So next we move to aluminium chloride. So if you dissolve aluminium chloride in water, it's going to dissolve. Therefore, we put a tick. We have aluminium nitrate, our last aluminium salt. So aluminium nitrate, if you dissolve in water, it's go going to dissolve. So you put a tick. Uh, next, we have the salts of zinc. We have zinc sulfate, zinc carbonate, zinc chloride, and zinc nitrate. Observations. Uh, zinc sulfate is a soluble salt, so we put a tick. If you dissolve in water, zinc sulfate will dissolve. Uh, zinc carbonate, if you dissolve zinc carbonate in water, the salt will not dissolve. And for that reason, we are going to put an X, meaning zinc carbonate is insoluble in water. Then we have zinc chloride. Zinc chloride is going to dissolve, therefore we put a tick. Uh, lastly, we have zinc nitrate. Zinc nitrate dissolved in water, it's going to dissolve in water. Next, we have the salts of iron. We have iron sulfate, iron carbonate, iron chloride, and iron nitrate. So, these are the expected observation. Iron sulfate dissolved in water is going to dissolve, therefore, you put a tick. Uh, iron carbonate dissolved in water, uh, the salt is insoluble, therefore, you put and X. We have iron chloride. Iron chloride is also going to dissolve in water. Therefore, we put a tick. Then we have iron nitrate. Iron nitrate dissolved in water. It's a soluble salt. So you put a tick. Uh, next, we have the salts of lead. We have lead sulfate. We have lead carbonate, lead chloride, and lead nitrate. All these are examples of salts. We have only put them into categories depending on the, uh, the anion that is there. So we have four anions. We have sulfates, we have carbonates, we have chloride, and we have nitrates. Now, lead sulfate dissolved in water. The salt is insoluble. Therefore, we put an X. Uh, lead carbonate dissolved in water. The salt is also insoluble. So therefore, we put an X. And then we have uh, lead chloride. Lead chloride, if you dissolve it in cold water, uh, it will not dissolve. So how do you make lead chloride to dissolve? You make it to dissolve by simply warming the mixture. So therefore we are saying that lead chloride will dissolve in hot water. So here we are seeing a soluble in hot water. And then we have lead nitrate. Lead nitrate dissolved in water. The salt is going to dissolve. Therefore, we put a tick. 
Next, we have the salts of copper. We have copper sulfate, we have copper chloride, um, copper carbonate, copper chloride, then copper nitrate. Expected observations, uh, copper sulfate, if you dissolve copper sulfate in water, it's going to dissolve. Therefore, you put a tick. Then the next one, we have copper carbonate. Copper carbonate in water, it's going to be insoluble. Therefore, you put an X. Uh, next, we have copper chloride. Copper chloride dissolved in water. The expected observation is it's going to be insoluble. Therefore, we put an X. And then lastly, we have copper nitrate. So copper nitrate dissolved in water. It's going to be soluble in water. Therefore, we put a tick. Lastly, we have the salts of barium. Barium. We start by barium sulfate. Uh, barium sulfate, when it's dissolved in water, uh, it's going to be insoluble. And for that case, our table, we're going to put an X, meaning barium sulfate is insoluble in water. Next, we have barium carbonate. If you dissolve barium carbonate in water, it's going to be insoluble. Therefore, you put an X. Uh, next, we have barium chloride. Barium chloride, uh, this one is soluble in water. Therefore, we put a tick. And then lastly, we have barium nitrate. So barium nitrate uh, dissolved in water, the salt is going to be uh, soluble. So, Lana, we are saying these are the uh, expected observations from the experiment we have uh, mentioned earlier. So, having said that, I now want us to look at a summary. From the table, you can see that uh, uh, both sodium both potassium and sodium, you can see their salts, uh, potassium sulfate, potassium carbonate, potassium chloride, potassium nitrate, all these are soluble. The same applies to uh, sodium, sodium sulfate, sodium carbonate, sodium nitrate, and sodium chloride. So in summary, we are saying that all salts of both sodium and potassium are soluble in water. That's the first observation you can make from this table. The second observation, Lana, we are saying, if you look at this column of nitrates, you should be able to notice something about nitrates. Remember, we have said where there is a tick, it means the salt is soluble in water. So, our second observation is what? That all nitrates, any salt that contains a nitrate, we expect it to be soluble in water. That is uh, observation number two from the table. Then the third point, we can get it from the column of carbonates. Apart from potassium, potassium carbonate, and sodium uh, carbonate, you realize that the other carbonates are insoluble. So we are saying our point number three is this, that all carbonates are insoluble except the carbonates of uh, sodium, and potassium. These two are insoluble. Our fourth point conclusion is obtained from the column of sulfates. You can see apart from uh, lead sulfate and barium sulfate, the other sulfates are soluble in water. So we are saying that all sulfates are soluble in water with the exception of lead sulfate and barium sulfate. And lastly, our conclusion point is on chlorides. You can see, uh, apart from lead chloride, apart from lead chloride, uh, we are saying the other chlorides are uh, soluble in, in water. Uh, of course, we have said lead chloride is soluble in hot water. So, Lana, we want to come with a conclusion basing on those uh, observations that we have seen there. So conclusion, conclusion, our first point, conclusion, our first point is as follows, uh, that all salts of sodium, potassium are soluble in water. All salts of sodium, 
potassium so we can add ammonium because ammonium is another example of a positively charged ion and ammonium are soluble in water think of any salt that has the word sodium that has the word potassium that has the word ammonium sodium sulfate potassium carbonate ammonium nitrate so long as it has these three cations then that salt will be soluble in water that's number one number two all nitrates are soluble in water we can see that from the table earlier on any nitrate you can mention sodium nitrate potassium nitrate magnesium nitrate any nitrate you think of then if you dissolve it in water that nitrate will be soluble in water our third point about conclusion is coming from carbonates we have said earlier that all carbonates are insoluble that's the point we are repeating that all carbonates all carbonates are insoluble but there is an exception remember earlier on we have said the first point you have said is that any salt of sodium potassium or ammonium is soluble but here we are saying all carbonates are insoluble that means we have some carbonates which are soluble and these are the carbonates of sodium potassium ammonium so we are saying all carbonates are insoluble except uh, except except carbonates uh, carbonates of sodium potassium and ammonium so uh, we have said earlier on that from the conclusion point number one potassium sodium and ammonium salts are soluble but here we are saying all carbonates are insoluble that means the carbonates of these three sodium potassium and ammonium if you put them in water they'll dissolve in water so we are saying if you put sodium carbonate in water it will dissolve put ammonium carbonate in water it will dissolve as well as potassium carbonate our fourth point of conclusion is coming from sulfates we are saying that from the table we said earlier on that all sulfates are soluble so that's the point we are uh, emphasizing that all sulfates are soluble but we mentioned the ones which are insoluble we said barium as well as uh, lead uh, lead what sulfate so these two are insoluble so otherwise the rest are insoluble so we are saying all the sulfates are soluble except uh, barium sulfate and lead sulfate but remember we said calcium sulfate is slightly soluble in water so it's good we also mentioned that one that uh, calcium sulfate is slightly soluble calcium sulfate is slightly soluble then our last point of conclusion is coming from chlorides so we said from the table chlorides are most of them are soluble so that's the conclusion we are coming up with that all all chlorides are uh, soluble all chlorides are soluble and remember we have said we gave an example uh, of the one that is uh, soluble in hot water and that was lead chloride so it's good we mention uh, that lead chloride is soluble in hot water so you can only make lead chloride to dissolve 
when you warm the mixture. So, Lana, we are saying that uh, from these five points, uh, the salts of sodium, potassium, and ammonium are soluble. Our second point is that all nitrates are soluble. Our third point is carbonates. All carbonates are insoluble. Uh, all carbonates are insoluble. All nitrates are soluble. And then uh, all sulfates are soluble. All chlorides are soluble. We have given exceptions. So we have come to the end of our lesson. Uh, it's good for your revision. You try and answer these questions. So I want you to try these questions. So the first question is identify the cations identify the cations that form identify the cations that form soluble salts that's our first question our second question is comment on the solubility comment on the solubility of sulfates give a brief comment on sulfates give a brief comment on chlorides give a brief comment on carbonates and give a brief comment on nitrates And that will be the end of our lesson for today. I want to thank you for being a good student, and I wish you the best.